Hello, Active Traders, and welcome to this Forex slash stock trading event with uh, myself, Ken Calhoun. I'm president of the DayTradingUniversity.com, the original and best university online for active traders. In tonight's event, we're going to look at how to bridge the Forex stocks money gap, how stock traders can trade the Forex. And unlike other people, I'm not going to go over some inanely boring, this is what Forex is and why it's the best thing since sliced bread, and it's a 24-hour market, and blah, blah, blah. Instead, I'm going to give you the mechanics of how me, a real trader, works the markets. So we're going to look at both intraday and swing trading. These are stock charts on the left, Forex charts on the right. And we're going to look at some of the differences and similarities from a trading mechanic standpoint and how to dig into these charts. And for all of you who are stock traders who are thinking about trading our different currency pairs, trading the Forex, I'm going to give you some of the things to start looking at in terms of pattern recognition skills and trade management tactics. So uh, you're in for a treat tonight. I've got 28 minutes left, so let's get on with it. Goal is to give you kind of a path or a bridge to get from one to the other. Uh, one thing I do not want to advocate is that you only trade one market. I think that's completely wrong. I've seen a lot of Forex people out there that say, well, I used to trade stocks, but now I only trade Forex because it's the world's best. No, that's a bunch of hooey. The truth is any good professional trader worth their salt trades multiple markets, myself included. Most of the professional guys I know will trade multiple markets. If the stock market's quiet, say it's midday, or it's summer, it's a choppy summer market, then we may be looking for a breakout in, say, the dollar yen on a Forex chart. Uh, it's very intelligent to trade where the volatility is. You know, I, I play Texas Hold'em, but I also play Pot Limit Omaha, right? I, I play multiple markets and wherever the money's at. So make sure as a trader you trade multiple markets. That's one message that's unique out there. It seems like everyone's either one or the other. Either they trade stocks or they trade Forex. Uh, but they don't trade both. A good, intelligent, professional, smart trader will trade multiple markets, and so should you. As always, all information is for educational or information use only. I'm not making any recommendations about what to buy, sell, or hold. You may have seen me speak at the World's Forex Expo back in 2008. I'm a longtime expert in this industry, uh, or last year at the Dallas Expo, or coming up in a couple of weeks live at Caesars Palace. I'll be speaking twice for the Money Show Traders Expo. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask me tonight. If you've ever had one of these days while trading currency pairs or trying to figure out what the heck a PIP is and standard and mini and micro lots and the rest of it, don't worry about it. My goal is to help turn that around for you and give you some very professional food for thought and help you start off by looking at similarities and differences in day versus swing trading chart patterns. I'm not going to go over the difference between what's a share and what's a lot and what's a pip and what's a dollar and all that. That's irrelevant. What you need to know as a trader is the mechanics of how to trade. So I want to give you professional tips on how to trade stocks versus Forex and how to start adding Forex uh, to your stock trading. And also, even if you've already you know, started trading Forex, I want to give you a more professional perspective on how to use position sizing and scaling with that tonight. Our goals for tonight's training, uh, there's three of them. One is to help prepare stock traders for successfully trading the top Forex charts. My second goal for tonight is to show you the main differences in charts for day and swing trading stocks versus Forex. We're going to tear apart the charts and look at the hottest plays from today's markets, right? And what are similarities and differences? The third goal is to give you a step-by-step -step simple blueprint to help you get started adding Forex to your trading and do so in a way that's not intimidating. I don't know about y'all, but when I first heard about the Forex, it was way back in the early 2000s, I started looking into it, and I'm looking, you know, the first thing that came to mind was I look at all the stuff about pips and mini and micro and standard lots and pip spreads and all that, and I just kind of said, forget it. It's too much hassle. Let me just go back to my stock trading, and I did so for many years. But starting mid-2000s, I started with Forex once I learned how to do this in a much more simple price action and dollar based way and so one of the things I would encourage you to do is go ahead and bookmark this YouTube video I made a few days ago with an actual live real Forex trade without any pips without any contracts if you use interactive brokers all you do is you know hit the ask and put the number of dollars of the underlying that you want to trade hit a market order and hit transmit and boom you're done it's just that easy, right? So for those of you who are fellow interactive brokers traders, you can use your trader's workstation and just put in the dollars. You don't have to even worry about, they don't use many micro standard lots. So anyway, it makes it much easier. So my goal is to give you 
pattern recognition and actual trade examples of how this stuff works. Now Forex basics, I'm just going to stay with me for a minute or two here. I go over a couple of basics and then we're going to spend most of the time on the chart patterns tonight because that's where I live. I'm a trader. I work on the charts from today's markets. But uh, it's open for trading uh, primarily weekdays, okay? Uh, Sunday afternoon to Friday afternoon. Uh, three sessions, Tokyo, London, and New York. The more advanced you get, you may specialize in trading specific opens and closes. But you don't have to, your first couple, three years as a Forex trader, you don't even have to worry about that. The main thing is to identify what the most active pairs are, kind of like with stock trading. What's the widest range or gap charts that have the biggest trading ranges on the strongest breakout patterns. Also look at the most active pairs, which best patterns rotate each week. And so we're going to look at that. Uh, the good news is there's no, the best news for day traders is there's no pattern day trading rule. So you can day trade Forex all day long with 3000 bucks in your account or $1,000 in your account or five grand in your account. So that's a big plus. You can scout Forex without the necessity of having that, art of, well, that PDT rule, that none of, the Reg T rule that none of us who've been old school day traders like that came along in the early 2000s that said, wait a minute, you have to have 25 k to play. Uh, that's not the case in Forex. So you can day trade to your heart's content without any, you know, three trades in a five-day round trip unless you got 25 grand or more in your account rule. So that's a big plus. If you want to day trade and learn how to day trade, you can do that on the Forex without needing to have 25K. That's a huge strategic advantage for active traders. Another is there's no gaps during the weekday trading. There's usually going to be a minor gap over the weekend, uh, but so that's why you want to, most good swing traders in Forex, what I do in my own swing trades when I'm trading the Forex is try and get my round trips in and out during a given weekday. So I might put on a trade Monday or Tuesday and be out Thursday or Friday, right? So I have a three, four days to let the trade work out during that cycle. Uh, you can certainly hold over a weekend and so forth, but you can have a continuous trend line to trade uh, at least from late Sunday through late Friday. So that's another big plus. Uh, if you use IB, and again, I, I have no rec how to say, I have no connection with them other than being a regular retail customer. I am not compensated or paid in any way, shape, or form by IB uh, to recommend them, but I just I use them because they're the number one discount broker. It's only one dollar trade for stocks and a flat two dollar trade commission, not a pip spread for all Forex trades. And you can enter them on the trader's workstation similar to stock and ETF trades by just, you know, putting in the number of dollars worth of whatever you want to trade, click market or limit or I just use market, right? And it shows you the pip spread here. Currently, there's a five pip spread, right? The zero by five shows you a five pip spread in the dollar yen right now. Uh, and just click the transmit button. So very easy. That's it. And you don't have to worry about There are no lots in interactive brokers, which is great. You don't have to, big thing to learn. The, I guess the only drawback is with IB, they require 10K minimum to open accounts there. So, you know, there's that. Uh, but that's a, a big plus, at least, if you got 10K to, to work with IB. So. Anyway, let's take a look at similarities and differences. One of the things we're going to look at in tonight's charts are the difference between stock charts and Forex charts. And here I've got a one-day chart. In my live trading open room, I was calling 3D breakouts for the long, I think it was 65.8 was my long, yeah, 65.8 was my long call. I'll post a video later on the YouTube channel, but 65.8 was my long call in 3D. And we nailed it for a big breakout win today. Anyway, that's a day trading, one minute nice one minute professional day trading chart we're looking at the open and range breakout and trade that during that first half hour to 40 minutes of the market open right and again you can always use I like using the professional one minute advanced chart like this okay well be that as it may for swing trades as you all have known of as I've published in equities.com and all the other industry Active Trader Magazine and Stocks and Commodities and so forth indicators. I like using a 15-day, 15 15-minute 15 chart for my stock swing trades. And so this is what 3D looks like on a 15-day basis. You can see really high volume on today's breakout. Bearish engulfment, pulled it back down. Kind of hammers here, lifted it back up. Shooting star, let it go sideways and down a bit. Anyway, a 15-day, 15 15-minute 15 chart for stock trades. For Forex swing trades, I like using, you have to use a little more sensitive indicators because uh, that's one of the similarities and differences, as I have in the slide here, is that your Forex charts overall have less volatility than the widest range stock charts. So you have to use 
a little more sensitive indicators to capture trend reversals. For example, if you see a uh, bullish lower shadow that pierces a lower B band, then you often see a spike in the opposite direction, right? Uh, I also use the ADX. I use the B bands uh, and I use the Wilder's Average Directional Index in my swing trading, whenever I'm swing trading Forex. And for day trading or scalping Forex, what I like using is a five minute chart. And again, notice that it's a 24 hour chart. So it goes from midnight to midnight, right? Zero hours to 2400 hours. Uh, and I use the RSI with the 14 step parameter to identify inside range cups as well as reversal plays off the Bollinger Bands for that. And this is the US dollar to the Japanese yen in these two charts. So my point is Forex charts overall have less volatility. So something to keep in mind when you're going from, and again, do not, don't jump ship. I'm going to trade stocks for the rest of my freaking life. I love trading stocks at heart. I'm a core stock professional day and swing trader. That's what I do. I'm a stock trader. But I also trade Forex because there are times where the market, the stock markets are quiet and not worth trading, like the middle of the trading day. Uh, or uh, in years past, at least the summer months, tend to be relatively quiet and difficult to trade in the stock market. So it's good to be, be able to play multiple markets and diversify. So I trade whatever I think is going to move the best based on my technical and trading expertise. So uh, it, you should be trading multiple things. Try them out. You know, Maybe you're just okay as a stock trader, but you're slightly better as a Forex trader. So that's good. You wouldn't know that unless you tested it out and tried it. So just one word to the wise, what I found, I've made thousands of trades. The Forex charts overall have less volatility than the widest range stock charts. So that's one thing that you have to keep in mind. And because of that, you need a little more sensitive indicators. I do not like a lot of derivative lagging indicators. I'm still at heart a price action professional breakout trader. That's what I do. Uh, but I want you to look at some of the more sensitive indicators that we have available to us uh, in addition to uh, simple price action breakout plays. We still use candles and Western technicals, and those are still core. The only person in the known universe worth learning candlesticks from is my colleague Steve Nissen, the original candlestick pro. Uh, you got a lot of copycats out there trying to pretend they know something about candlesticks. I've been working with Steve Nissen 12 years now. Uh, proud to work with the guy. Uh, he's the best in the world out there. And I still know maybe 5% of what Steve knows, okay? Steve's depth and breadth goes light years beyond mine, and I know more than any of these other so-called candle gurus, right? So... Uh, and Steve's the best, you know, times 10. So make sure you learn candlesticks from this. And anyway, and learn your Western momentum breakouts from me. You know, I'll tell you guys the, the truth. This is what you need to know. Anyway, you still use your candles, Western technicals, and trade management as, uh, as the core process. Uh, the big benefit to Forex, and this is another new thing to keep in mind for those of you who are stock traders, is that, you know, let's say you're trading throughout the Monday through Friday weekday trades, right? You have a continuous line in Forex, which is outstanding. You do not have overnight gap risk. You do not have to worry about, well, what do I do if it gaps against me? You don't have, that's worries you do not have, at least if you're trading that late Sunday through uh, late Friday time window. Uh, you have very minor gaps over the weekend. But the main thing is you have a continuous line move in Forex, and that requires that you take a little, you adopt certain core trading strategies that are different than what a stock trader would do. Uh, that has its benefits. It's a very huge strategic benefit is that you have a continuous line. That means a lot to you in terms of position sizing and scaling and technical entry and exit patterns and where to add to a trade, where to initiate a new trade, where to start to scale out, which signals are the strongest that are likeliest to hold for you, how to avoid false breakouts, and much more. So continuous line move in Forex is a big difference you know, compared to trading your stocks and ETFs. So, that's another thing to keep in mind in terms of some of the core patterns to look at and how to trade them. Okay, now I'm going to flip over into our charts here for just a minute and teach you some of the patterns to look for in day trades. Then we're going to go to swing trades. And what I want you to do, anytime you're looking at a new trading strategy, I'm a former corporate quality engineer and statistician. I'm a UCLA grad. I'm a certified quality engineer. I've got all the credentials and years of experience in industry, manufacturing and engineering environments. And from a variation, process variance standpoint, we're looking at when are things the strongest in terms of imbalance of buyers and sellers. 
And what does that mean to you in terms of how do you set up trades? My single favorite trading pattern is what? It's always going to be micro cups. Okay? You have a small bullish cup. I called 65.8 as a long call in 3D this morning and nailed it. You could see similarly a bear cup. And this is way in the wee hours in the morning, right? In the wee hours in the morning in the dollar yen. If you see that cup, you can always set your sell trigger right under the cup low. Similarly, in a long pattern for stocks, you're going to see that. So that's a similarity. You have open range cups to work with. The other thing you have is average true ranges or price elasticity that's likely to move in a single direction. So you mark out what's the trading range. You don't measure number of pips. Yeah, I don't care about pips. I just care about can I make money if I short it there and where's the first sign of reversal? Okay, now you can drop down into a longer time frame chart, like a 15 minute, and you'll often see a hammer, like right here. A hammer with a bullish lower shadow piercing the lower B band tells me to cover out a short if it gets above that hammer high. Does everyone see that green hammer right there? And so that would be the exit right there, piercing above that. So you go short and you cover, and that's a good clip. That's how you trade that. One of the things that I like to do across markets is make sure that I'm looking for it's almost an uncanny ability or a very strongly defined pattern to get me in in the strongest of the charts and identify where those entries are and use that to differentiate from everything else that's out there. So, for example, Yelp was a good chart from today. Had a bullish cup, breakout moved up. Same thing here with our currency pairs. One of the things that I teach traders in all my Forex training, I've been teaching traders how to trade the Forex for so many years now, one of the things you need to quickly identify is trouble charts. Like the dollar Swissy would be no good for scalping today. Similarly, it's likely to not be very good for day trading the rest of today into the evening and tomorrow because the choppy ranges, right? So that's another similarity. One of the things that I do like, for example, Aussie dollar today, though, we had a nice bullish cup breakout, which gave us a very good signal for a long. Right? And then as soon as it makes a micro bear cup, we get out. And again, if you tighten in, look for a I, I teach traders to look for two opposing red candles. Okay, So on a 10-minute, uh, and this is the Aussie dollar, you can see two red candles. You get out at right under the low, which would be there. So your entry is there at 20, 30 pips above the high, or just visually slightly above the high. And you get out once there's two opposing red candles. In this case, would be over here. And that's the round trip on a scalp trade. And it's another winning trade setup. Okay, So those are the types of patterns that you want to look for. When it comes to similarities of trend, you know, you can see, for example, Starbucks today had lots of caffeine. It was a five-cup day for Starbucks as it percolated to new highs from a base of 80 all the way up to 82 and a quarter. Boom, flawless victory. Well, what I like is every single time it did a cup breakout, it kept running on up. So you see, cup breakout, cup breakout, cup breakout. Day trading, yeah, I've been doing this since the 90s. One of the things that I do is look for these patterns. And if you see a shooting star, for example, right there, you know not to buy until it gets above the high of the shooting star. That's a good long trigger. Boom, takes out new highs. Don't see any shooting stars here. Looking for two red candles. We didn't see a loss of that. This would be my exit because we have two red candles, and this is the first time in this candle in which it lost that support of two opposing candles. These two and these two never did get underneath those. These two, though, it did. So that would be the exit. So you get in on the breakout trigger right above and get out at the first sign of a reversal. Similarly, in your Forex charts, you can look for similar patterns where you're looking for the very strongest of the cup patterns. Uh, here's an example of the cable. The cable's a nickname for the British pound to the U.S. dollar. And you can see today... Britain was in charge and large as it took out new highs on a cut breakout continuation. And where's the first sign? We had two red candles. Of course, my competitors are frantically scrambling to copy this stuff down. Fortunately, it's already copyrighted in an ind industry article, so I have proof of concept of being first to market. My lawyers tell me that's a good idea. So anyway, I vigorously protect my marks. Anyway, you have a bullish cut breakout here, and you can see two red candles. The first time a loss, that's over there. So that's your round trip trade there. Very similar type of approach for intraday trades. Now let's take a look at swings. Got about eight minutes left here tonight. Is this good though? I'm kind of trying to teach you guys the difference and similarities between stock and forex charts 
and do it in a very logical, step-by-step -step manner to help you understand where the very best of the chart patterns are and how to trade them. So for example, this is a 12-day. I use 12-day for Forex with ADX. I use 15-day for stocks, and I just use volume and price action for my stock trade. So you can see here we've got classic Calhoun cut breakout, pulls back to previous resistance, new support, snaps on up to new highs, and continues its merry way up from just over the 60 all the way up to now 70. Okay, so 10-point run in 3D. Similarly, and yet slightly different, one of the things I look for in my Forex swing trades, whenever I'm swing trading my Forex pairs, I'm always looking for inverse head and shoulder breakouts. And so here, for example, here's a left shoulder, a head, a right shoulder. This would be the neckline. You go long over there, and you get stopped out. You go long again, it holds, and you're off to the races. You scale in when it comes to position sizing. I always like to add to winning trades at new cups. The difference in Forex, one of the differences in Forex charts compared to your stock charts is I will usually skip congestion regions uh, inside cups. But for my Forex charts, I'm always looking for these inside head and shoulder breakouts to get me in, especially following a red ADX trigger when the red ADX breaks over 30 that tells me to go long on whatever subsequent day takes out new highs. And in this case, that's over here. So we stay out of a false breakout and in on one that continues on up. Okay, so that's one key difference in swing trading stocks versus forex. Stocks, we wait so 35 to 50 cents above new 15-day highs to start initiating a new trade. For forex, I like to get in a bit earlier because these charts tend to be on balance a little more compressed than the widest range of the stock charts. You have to get in a bit earlier, but you do that by combining things like an ADX trigger with an inverse head and shoulders breakout. Okay, that's a good professional writer downer. You should be writing that down. Test it out. Feel free to, you know, I've been teaching these things for years. That's what I do in my own Forex trade. So hopefully it'll work out for you guys too. And, uh, you know, test this out. You're looking for, I mean, there's more to it than just that, of course, but that's the, the basics and the most important things. If nothing else, at least learn how to trade cut breakout continuations. Here's cut breakout here in the dollar CAD. You can see the U.S. dollar to the Canadian dollar broke out nicely back on the 23rd, right? It took out new highs above the cup high, and on each subsequent cup high, it content, continued to run on up. How do you know when to get out? When do these things exhaust? Well, for that, look for signals in your daily chart. And what I like to get in, I'll always look for these narrow range candles. I was covering this for my Forex traders in an event I did last night. Look for a pattern, and this is a, on both stocks and forex, we use 90-day daily candlestick charts. And what I like to see is something that comes from below a 50 EMA line and pierces up to new highs. What I'm looking for is the two signals. One is this pattern where you have melted or flat candles followed by a wide-range candle, and you buy the new high on the day following a wide-range candle. Also, another confirmation is that pierced or broke above the 50 EMA line. So you could get in first trade would be anywhere, say 30 pips or so above that EMA crossover there. Second scale in trade would be somewhere after the wide range candle. So you would, would have seen that and you get in on that day or that day and that starts to build the trade to the upside. So those are some of the things that you want to start to look at as well. You know, the good thing about all these trading patterns is, again, it's really important that you learn from people like myself who are real traders with P&L proof that we're real traders. Most of the people in the industry are BSers who just talk about charts, but mysteriously can't show you trading platforms and real trades they make. Anyway, one of the things I want to cover for you guys is, and this is in this video, so I'm not going to spend much time on it because I've already captured it for posterity's sake, but I just recorded it a few days ago. But step by step, if you're using uh, Interactive Brokers Traders Workstation, uh, and again, you can call their, and you should call their trading desk and ask for help from their customer support guys or whatever. But all you do is click on Configure, click on Presets, click on Forex, then click on the dollars that you want to make your default size in U.S. dollars. So, for example, when I'm testing, I just use $100 U.S. trades, right? Itty bitty tiny micro trades, $100 U.S. So who needs, you know, many micro standard lots? You don't. There's no lots involved, which is one of the big reasons why I love IV. It's all just about the money. 
like me. I'm all just about trying to make money from my trades. So I don't want to worry about these artificial things called pips and lots and all that crap. I just care about the money. So anyway, and good professional traders do that. That's what we do. You know, the, you think the institutional traders are out there trading, you know, standard lot sizes? Well, they might, but most of them, are. they just go in the number of dollars. They want to allocate in capital as they're sizing into a trade. So anyway, you click over here, type in, for example, USD.JPY, hit return. Then over on the ask, you click ask, which means you want to buy it, just like anything else. Put in the number of dollars that you want to trade. Make that a market order if you wish. Click transmit, and bang, you're off to the races, and you're in, right? And to sell, the same thing. You click on the bid, just like you would. If you want to sell a market, you just put a market order in, click transmit, and that's it. They also have an FX trader platform that you can use. That's kind of nice because it visually shows you the different spreads and the, it kind of gives you a good visual directional cue. It kind of looks like a box, a, you know, a grid of things like a traditional uh, Forex uh, broker does. But I prefer to just use my trader's workstation like I do for all my stock trades and my E-mini trades and my ETF trades. Uh, I'm just uh, entering the ticker and paying with dollars what I want to trade when I'm buying or selling my Forex pairs. And that keeps things, uh, I don't know about y'all, but I like to keep life simple. So uh, that's a very easy migration plan for going from stocks to trading the Forex, at least using IB as a workstation. Let's see, what else is good to cover? Um, we're going to go back to the charts. Let me know if any questions. Again, this is brought to you by Day Trading University. I am the original trading university. Check the domain who is registries to see the dates of who registered what. And you see I'm the number one earliest trading university registered in the world. Public records don't lie, even though my competitors do. Anyway, eh, let's take a look at, at this. They can, they can try and lie, but I'm the original and happy to be that. And I'm happy to have all the trust all you guys, too. One of the things I want to do is keep it real and show you the patterns. So, for example, this 3D chart was outstanding today. You're not going to see that strong of a day trading chart in the Forex ever in life. So, you know, get over it. That's one of the challenges of trading the Forex. Uh, the good news is that when pairs are hot, they do have sustained runs and for swing trades. If a pair is moving strong over a long time frame, the trends tend to move and will hold in our current markets four to five days in a row which is easier to sort through. You don't have to do all this endless scanning like you do in the stock market. It's a good trend in Forex. For example, the EuroCAD it ran up five days in a row, right? Now it's ran down five days in a row. You have these five-day cycles that are easier to scan for. And for me, I just uh, these are the only ones that I trade, so I keep a relatively focused list. Uh, unlike stocks, I don't have to always scan through 100, 200 different instruments to find my trades. So it simplifies your scanning approach. Here's an example, the U.S. dollar to the Swiss franc. The dollar Swiss has been on a big run here lately. Can you see why bad for day trading or scalping, but good for swing trades, right? Just like with stock charts, some instruments are better suited for day trading and scalping than they are for swing trades and vice versa. On rare occasion, some will be good for both. In this example, 3D is good for both, right? It's great for day trade. It's got a five-point run, uh, and it's been good for a swing trade with a 16-point run over multiple days. Forex charts, you can see here, the dollar Swissy, nice, good, continuous uptrend continuation, but very choppy, and it would be very difficult to correctly have day traded this. So you need to be wise and understand the limitations. I like that quote from Clint Eastwood, said, man's got to know his limitations. I absolutely agree with that, and I absolutely agree with the, the stock and Forex charts, too. You have to know the limits of where the best trade setups are, whether those be day or swing trades and which pair is best suited for what trading style. Those are the type of things that I teach you in my educational events. So anyways, I wanted to thank you all for being here. Uh, let me know if any questions. I will go ahead and answer them. But does that give you a good, you know, the best that I can do in 30 minutes to give you a primer, some of the similarities and differences, and some of the things to keep in mind when it comes to going from stocks to adding. I would never jump ship and go just from stocks only to Forex only. That's it's like, I don't know, a dramatic uh, change, uh, like quitting a job and going to a completely different career field or something. Better to diversify and just add skills as a trader. So I want to give you guys the best of what to do.